in this section, we're going to be talking about um, the host base architectures and the client base architectures. But before I dive into that, I want to just um, talk a little bit about clients and servers because it is all relevant. There are many different types of client and servers that can be um, part of a network and the, distinct and the distinctions between them have become a bit more complex over time. Generally speaking, there are four types of computers that are commonly used as servers. And let's just go through them real quickly. The first one is a mainframe, which is a very large general purpose computer, usually costing millions of dollars, that is capable of performing very many simultaneous functions, supporting very many simultaneous users, and storing huge amounts of data. The second type um, of, of a server is known as a microcomputer. And it's the type of a computer, um, the microcomputer is used as servers, and they range from small to similar to a desktop. Um, and another type of server is a cluster. And a cluster is a group of computers, often microcomputers, which are linked together so that they act as one computer. And then you have a virtual server, <coughs> which is a virtual server is one computer, um, often a microcomputer that acts as several servers. Um, it uses special software um, and several operating systems are installed on the same physical computer so that one physical computer appears as several different servers on the network. That's real popular today. <clears throat> um, also, there are, are five commonly used types of clients. <coughs> and um, these are some of the most common. Um, a microcomputer, which is the most common type of client today. This includes a desktop and a portable um, computer as well as tablet PCs that enable the user to write with a pen like stylus instead of typing on a keyboard. Another type of client is a terminal which is a device with a monitor and a keyboard but no central processing unit. Um, they're also called dumb terminals so named because they do not partic participate in the processing of the, of the data they display and have bare minimum required to operate as input and output devices only. It's basically like a TV screen and a keyboard. The next commonly used client is a network computer, and a network computer is designed primarily to communicate using internet-based standards, um, but has no hard disk. It has only limited functionality. Um, the last, um, well, there's a couple more. A transaction terminal is designed to support specific business transactions, <clears throat> such as the automated teller machines or ATM used by banks. Other examples of transaction terminals are point of sale terminals that you might see in a supermarket. And lastly, there's a handheld computer or personal digital assistant that um, you probably would never have seen, but I saw back in my day, earlier days of technology, um, which were very mobile and that could be used also as a network client. These are um, clients and servers that you might wanna become familiar with because you'll see this same terminology later on as we further discuss um, application architecture and the, the uh, multiple um, architectures in use today. Host-based architectures. The very first data communication networks developed in the 1960s were host-based. With the server, um, it was usually a large mainframe computer performing all four functions. And we talked about those four functions earlier. Um, and if you want, I can um, rehash those four functions a little later on. But all architectures have to perform the four functions. Um, well, let me just mention those four functions again. The first is data storage. The second is data access logic. The third is application logic. And the fourth function is presentation logic. Um, all of the architectures that we have been discussing and that we will discuss will be performing that work. That is the work that we're referring to. Okay, the clients, usually the terminals, 
um, enabled users to send and receive messages to and from the host computer. The clients merely captured keystrokes sent to them um, to the server for processing and accepted instructions from the server on what to display. This very simple architecture often works well. Application software is developed and stored on the one server along with all the data. If, you, if you've ever used a terminal um, or a microcomputer, you've used a host-based application. There is one point of control because all messages flow through the one central server. In theory, there are um, economies of scale because all computer resources are centralized. There are two fundamental problems with host-based networks. First, the server must process all the messages. As the demands for more and more network applications grow, many servers become overloaded and unable to quickly process all the user's demands. Prioritizing users' access becomes difficult. Response times become slower, and network managers are required to spend increasingly more money to um, upgrade the server. Unfortunately, upgrades to the mainframes that usually are the servers in this architecture are lumpy. That is, what I mean by lumpy is, the upgrades come in large increments and are expensive, like in the $500,000 range. It is difficult to upgrade just a little in this case. So needless to say, the host base architectures are not the most favored this day and time, but they have had good uses in the, in the past. This client-based architectures. In the light, late um, 1980s, there was an explosion in the use of microcomputers and the microcomputer-based LANs, which, is, which are the local area networks. Today, more than 90% of most organizations' um, total computer processing power now resides on microcomputer-based LANs, not, um, not in centralized mainframe computers. Part of this expansion was fueled by a number of low-cost, highly popular applications such as word processors, spreadsheets, and presentation graphic programs. It was also fueled in part by managers' frustrations with application software on host mainframe computers. Most mainframe software um, is not an, as, as easy to use as microcomputer software. It's, it is far more expensive and can take years to develop. In the, 1980, in the late 1980s, many large organizations had application development <clears throat> backlogs of two to three years. That is, getting any new mainframe application program written would take years. New York City, for example, had a six-year backlog. In contrast, managers could buy microcomputer packages or develop microcomputer-based uh, applications in a few months. With client-based architectures, the clients are microcomputers on a LAN, and the server is usually another microcomputer on the same network. The application software on the client computer is responsible for the presentation logic. This simple architecture often works well. If you've ever used a word processor and stored your document file on a server, you've used a client-based architecture. The fundamental problem in client-based networks is that all data on the server must travel to the client for processing. For example, suppose the user wishes to display a list of all employees with company life insurance. All the data in the database must travel from the server where the database is stored over the network circuit to the client, which then examines each record to see if it matches the data requested by the user. This can overload the network circuits because far more data is transmitted from the server to the client than the client actually needs. <laughs>